Deep in the Cascades, Cachis Lake has some of the best mountain lake kayak camping in the Pacific Northwest. It's 9 a.m. in late June, and we're at the boat launch. It's a beautiful sunny day, with very light winds, and the lake level is full. We're looking towards the north end of the lake here, where we'll be paddling to for our remote kayak camping at the ingress of the Cachis River. Parking is $10 per night. After packing our kayaks with all our camping gear, we're ready to launch. This is a popular lake for kayak camping, and it was great to get there early, to get the best parking spot and pick up the best campsite. The lake was like a mirror, it was so calm, and the water was crystal clear and cool. The temperature is about 70 Fahrenheit or 21 Celsius. We're wearing wetsuits for safety because the water temperature is much colder, with fresh snow melt still coming into the lake. We love paddling this lake early in the spring and summer. Later in the summer, towards the end of August and onwards, the lake level typically gets much lower, as the lake is part of the Yakima Irrigation Scheme. I'll put a great resource in the comments that you can use to check the lake level before you go. Part one of our kayak camping trip takes us from the launch, north past the island, to the head of Cachis Lake, near the inflow of the Cachis River, where we'll be camping. Our kayaks are fully loaded with all our camping gear, clothes, food, and water, but the winds are so light, less than one knot, and the lake is so flat that it was peaceful and relaxing just gliding through the water with this stunning lake and pristine forests and mountains all around. We stopped frequently just to admire the serenity and take in the beauty and sounds of nature. This is also a great lake for paddleboarding and canoeing. We do recommend caution though, and check the winds, as sometimes, especially in the afternoon, winds can come up along the lake, which make these sports a bit more challenging. On one of our return trips, we saw a paddleboarder that was struggling to get back to the boat launch against a strong wind. A striking feature of this route is the incredibly steep sides of the lake. We had a few dry days leading up to this trip and you could already see the moss starting to dry out and crack. And the beautiful wildflowers blooming. This is a long way from home. The water was incredibly clear, and the lake got deep quickly with its steep sides. Beautiful purple and yellow wildflowers, and tall old-growth trees along the sides of the lake. We paddled along the western shore of the lake, heading north towards our target campsite at the north end of the lake. Arriving at the island, we're now almost halfway to our campsite at the head of the lake.
The island was small and rocky, but had beautiful wildflowers all over it. The island doesn't have a name, but I nominate it to be called Wildflower Island. You can see how steeply the lakesides plunge into the depths near the island. and stumps on the lake bottom, covered with the lake currently being full. There's our launch at the north end of the Kachis campground, and the north end of the lake where our campsite is located near the inflow of the Kachis River. Some people camp on the island, but it's a bit rocky and exposed for our liking. Rounding the corner, you can see some of the still snow-capped mountains forming the watershed of the Cachis River. From the left, there's Chimney Rock West, Summit Chief, Mount Daniel, and the Citadel. The mountains behind the head of Kachis Lake rise steeply to the peak of Chimney Rock Mountain at almost 8,000 feet. May and June are the best time of the year to see the wildflowers. Incredible how they grow in the cracks on this cliff. You can really see the stunning clarity of the water here. It's one of our favorite things about Kachis Lake. Beautiful little waterfall there. You could probably drink straight from that mountain creek with water so clean and cold. And here we are at the head of the lake. With all this sightseeing, it took just over two hours to get from the launch to the head of the lake. Time to head in and scout out our campsite. With the lake level full, we were relieved to see the campsite we were heading for was dry. Beautiful campsite with a fire ring and shade and beautiful view and nice breeze. We did notice that something had been ripping at the dead trees on the left and right. Probably a bear looking for grubs. We'll be hanging our food tonight for safety. Being near the mouth of the Kachis River, this is also probably on the path of bears. We also have bear spray for safety. 
looking across the mouth of the Cachis River inflow into the lake. There's a beautiful waterfall on the other side there. We'll visit later, after we set up camp. But first a quick swim to cool off. <laughs> Can you breathe? Whew. That's very refreshing. There were lots of butterflies and moths around the campsite. Curiously, they seemed to love Karen's water shoes. Time for an aerial recon. Setting up camp was quick. Beautiful snow-capped peaks, and the snowmelt sourcing the Cachis River. And you can see the Cachis campground and launch point from which we came. And scouting up the Cachis River. We hung our food in a nearby tree to get it out of reach of raccoons, bears, and other critters. Nice fire ring, ready for a campfire later. Beautiful big trees all around the campsite, giving us some nice shade on this hot day. A little hummingbird came to investigate the bright colors in our campsite, figuring out they weren't flowers and flew off. A little breeze came up in the afternoon to help cool things off. There's no cell phone coverage here, just nature. So good to recharge the soul. We do have a Zolio satellite communicator for emergencies though, and two-way texting and weather. It worked great here, even with the high mountains all around us. To contrast the nature, once or twice a day, fighter jets shoot by overhead, heading north and low, right up the Cachis Lake Valley. Time to take a short paddle over to explore the nearby waterfall. On the way I tried to explore up the river a bit, but its mouth was blocked completely by long logs. So we headed east across the lake towards the waterfall. As we reached the other side, you could already hear the waterfall. The name Cachis actually means more fish, but I haven't seen many fish in the lake yet. There were some other primitive campsites along the north shore of the lake. I took the opportunity to explore one of them. Nice beach to land on and go for a swim or fish from. Nice fire ring overlooking the lake and level place for the tent pad. You'll see the waterfall area also has several campsites.
After just a short 25 minute paddle, we arrived at the waterfall. The waterfall was just a few minutes walk from the beach we landed at. Lots of nice fresh mountain stream water for those that camp near the waterfall. There's something beautiful and soothing about the sound of flowing water and waterfalls. After some precious and relaxing time at the waterfall, it was time to head back to our campsite to prepare dinner. Beautiful view from here of the dramatic jagged mountain range behind our campsite. Time for a drink to cool off and relax at the campsite. Seattle Dry Cider, one of my favorites. So the one thing about this location is the high mountains on either side and there's no cell phone coverage here. So one of the things I'm really glad I, I got is this Zolia and we did a test with it. Um, it does this kind of check-in function. You can see that check mark at the top, that's a button. If you hit that, it sends notification via SMS and email to your contacts, just letting them know your lat long coordinates and, you know, that you're okay. And, uh, but, you know, there's an app on the phone where you can type a message and people can message you and um, it, it tries to go through your phone, like Wi-Fi or cellular, if it can. Uh, but if it can't, uh, it uses the Iridium satellite network. And I was really curious on this trip to try, like, to see if it actually worked. Um, and it did. Uh, it, it sent bi-directionally. We were able to message other people, and other people were able to message us. And um, you can actually see on the app when the message gets sent um, if it goes via satellite. So super impressed. Would highly recommend it. Of course, it also has the SOS button in case you get in serious trouble and need help. We take all the precautions we can think of and hope to never have to use this, but it's nice to know it's there if we get into an emergency situation. Another unexpected fighter jet flyby. You really have to have your camera ready. At Kachis Lake, the excitement of these flybys really contrasts against the extreme remoteness, nature, beauty, and tranquility. Not many visitors this far up the lake, and this guy was quite late in the afternoon, too. Brisket and bean stew for dinner. After all that paddling and exploring the waterfall area, we were hungry. In the late afternoon, in the shadow of the mountains, it started to get cool. Time for a campfire. In the evening, you can see the shadows growing across the lake towards the east.
If you look carefully, you can definitely see small fish in the lake. We haven't yet seen any large fish in the lake. Maybe they're hanging out in deeper water. A common merganser cruising up the river in the evening. At around 7.30 p.m. the lake is already completely in shadow and the temperature is getting quite cool. Beautiful reflections. It's now just after 9 p.m. and the lake is peaceful. The wind has died down and just the glow of the dusk is left. After cleaning up and hanging all our food, and anything with a scent really, we're getting sleepy after all that exercise. After dousing the fire thoroughly to put it out, we called it a night and went right to sleep, listening to the nature sounds of the lake, and we could hear the waterfall in the distance. I was up early, just before 6 a.m. It was a great night of sleep. No unwelcome visitors, thankfully, bears, raccoons, or otherwise. But we were prepared, and so we slept well. The lake was really peaceful in the morning, just the sound of waking birds and the distant waterfall. Another beautiful sunny day, and the rays already catching the tops of the mountain peaks on the east side of the lake. Beautiful mist drifting across the surface of the lake. Temperatures cooled down quite a bit overnight. Time for some coffee to warm up. Karen is practicing her bowline knot, one of the most useful knots for kayaking and camping. Nice job, babe. Eh? Karen did a bowling. Karen. First time we ever heard loons around this area, dancing in the morning sunlight. They have the most amazing call. Seemed so appropriate for this stunningly beautiful setting. While we were watching the loons, they came right up the river near our campsite. Really distinctive black and white spotted pattern on their backs. It was a beautiful sunrise over the mountains to the east. After packing up camp, we left the campsite cleaner than we found it. What you pack in, you pack out. Another spectacular day for kayaking.
Our paddle today takes us from our campsite at the north end of the lake, south past the island, to the launch for our pullout. There was another group of kayak campers camping over at the waterfall, and by 9am they had already packed up and left. Although we didn't encounter a single mosquito or fly on this camping trip, we did see quite a bit of pollen on the surface of the lake around this point of our trip. We stopped briefly for a rest along the western shore. Still so many interesting places yet to explore around this lake. After just an hour of relaxed paddling, we passed the island at around 10 a.m. And this is more than halfway back to our pullout at the north end of the Kachis campground. Still no significant wind. In our experience, the wind on the lake typically comes up in the afternoon. Closer to the pullout, we passed an armada of paddlers that were headed north. It definitely seemed like there were more paddlers today, a Saturday, than yesterday when we arrived. Great day for paddleboarding too, with no wind and waves. At less than two hours of relaxed paddling, even with our kayaks fully loaded with camping gear, we were within sight of our pullout point. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, you should definitely check out our kayaking video at Lake Easton, just to the south of Kachis Lake. I'll put a link below. We're releasing new kayaking adventures regularly. Subscribe and you'll be notified as we release. Happy kayaking and camping. Bye for now.